So today I'm going to talk about uh, the great things one can do by looking, uh, linking up flip-flops in, in sequence. This is what's known as sequential logic. And to begin with, we'll start talking about scalars or counters. Those mean the same thing. Uh, a scalar is something that counts up or down. And we can make those out of D or T-type flip-flops. So here, for example, if you connect the Q bar output of a D-type flip-flop back into its input, or in a T-type flip-flop uh, where you set the toggle input to 1, uh, you can uh, cut a, a clock uh, input uh, into 2. In other words, uh, the frequency of the output will be uh, half that of the input. And you can see what happens. Um, the clock comes in on the clock edge. Here's the clock edge. Q bar, uh, whatever it was, D becomes that, so it switches state on every upward clock pulse. So if we start at zero, we change, goes up, we change again, it goes down, change again, it goes up. Always Q bar becomes the next Q. Q bar, Q, Q bar, Q. That's what the feedback does. If you look at the toggle type flip-flop, every time the clock comes in, the one says switch states. Uh, so Every clock cycle, we go, we switch the Q. Clock comes up, we switch states. Because we only change the state on the upward part, that means basically if the clock is, uh, is has one frequency, we have half a, a cycle in between. And so we go to half that frequency. Now you can put uh, the... You can chain these together uh, by having two. Here I'm going to illustrate this with two T-type flip-flops, but you can also do it with two D-types with feedback. Here you take the ones, the state coming out of the first one and feed it into the clock of the second one. And because this has, has a clock that's half this, the output here will be one quarter of the, uh, of the input. And so uh, we had this already, but now each one of these rise, rising edges of the Q1 creates a, a change in the state of the Q2. And you can go to a third one, uh, just in exactly the same way, and now we'll have an eighth of the clock cycle. Uh, this feeding of, of the output of one stage into the next uh, is called a ripple counter, because the the signal ripples through the uh, through your sequence of uh, counters, um, and so if we look at actually how this is going, if uh, everything starts off with zeros, so Q one equals zero, Q two equals zero, Q three is zero, then they all turn on at once uh, as um, as this sim signal goes through, uh, this turns, and then this turns, and then this turns. Note that there's a little propagation delay each time. So while it looks like they're all lined up, and in fact they're not quite lined up, there's a little propagation in time. That's a problem with the ripple counter. But since they all turn on at the same time, we go from 0 to a binary 7 here. And then this one being higher frequency turns off, and so we get 6. So this is actually counting down. If we want up, all we have to do is switch. Uh, rather than feeding Q into the next one, we refeed Q bar into the next one uh, down the line. And then uh, that just changes on what edge you're going. So here you see that the first one comes in, turns on the 1, but uh, there hasn't been an upward edge here. That's a downward edge, and only when Q1 turns off do we get Q2 turning on? And uh, so, and that works again when Q2 turns off, Q3 turns on, and then you, if you work out the timing diagram, you see you count up now from one, uh, zero, we had zero out here, to seven. Another type of circuit that you can make with flip-flops is a register. 
And uh, in this case, we only use D-type. And D-types are very good for registers because the D means data, and it's easy just to put the data in. So I'll start with the simplest register. I'll set up on these A inputs a given, in, uh, a given value, and then on the clock cycle, all those things will be transferred, and B will take on those values. Um, that's what is illustrated by the timing diagram here. I, I set up the three A signals to be all ones, and then on this clock cycle, all the Bs become as well. If I turn off the A's one at a time, uh, that becomes true on the next clock pulse. Uh, so uh, we can combine that with an asynchronous set and reset, uh, not connected to the clock. It, they usually come in on the top and bottom of these things, uh, and that is the working memory that you have on your computer, uh, where uh, S is then called a write enable, or WE, sometimes. Now, rather than having one input for each flip-flop, we can feed the output of one of each flip-flop into the input of the next. These are all D-types again. Now, if A is changing uh, at each clock cycle, the bit will be processed through. So imagine, so here's our clock, a has this format, so it's 1, 1, or in counting in time, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and so forth. And, of course, B1, which is just connected at every clock cycle, uh, takes on what A was. But now what happens to B2 is one clock cycle later, uh, B2 takes on what B1 was. So if this is the serialized form of B1, then B2 is just shifted by one clock cycle to the right, and then B3, one more clock cycle to the right. The point of doing this is that if we have a series of bits, a series of numbers bits on A, we can feed those into B, say if we had a set of eight cycles in A that we wanted to all store at the same time, then we could feed it into B if we had eight uh, flip-flops in our register, then we'd have all eight bits at the same time in the various places along the B register. Another use for flip, uh, of the shift register is to feed the last part back into the first, and now we see that uh, there's no external input, but if B1 is on, then that feeds into B2, and that feeds into B3, now, I fed the Q bar of 3 back in to uh, B1. So when B3 turns off, uh, that's the signal that B1 should then turn back on again. And once we have this pattern set up, uh, it will repeat itself. And notice that um, we turn on for 3 because there's 3, and then we turn off for 3. And so, if we have three uh, flip-flops, uh, we have a mod 6, or 2 times 3, uh, counter, meaning that uh, we divide six pulses in into one pulse. So we've divided by 2, uh, by 6, sorry. Uh, now, uh, you would think that you could only have uh, even numbers dividing, but I can also require uh, that... I, I switch when I have the AND of the two last two outputs. Now the uh, upstroke is a, a little bit shorter than the, the downstroke of the circuit, and I can get, in this case, a divide by five counter rather than a divide by six. And uh, I, can, I can then imagine other uh, ways of, of feeding back uh, to get whatever kind of counters I want. Then, but I can, with various numbers of flip-flops in this way, divide by any number that I want.